When people ask, oh, what's the carnivore diet? What should I be eating? Well, it seems very obvious that you're gonna be eating meat, but the second that we say what you're allowed to eat, then people get super upset. They get really worried. They get a lot of anxiety towards the things that may be taken away from them. And they start to hone in and focus on, hey, wait, can I have cheese? <laughs> Hey, wait, can I still eat vegetables? Hey, wait, can I still have fruit? Am I allowed a cheat meal? You know, all these questions start to come up. What I like to look at is I like to call this diet a meat-based diet. However, if you wanna really try this out and you wanna really learn how a carnivore diet works for you, then I would advise that you do something that we refer to as a carnivore challenge. This was brought to the masses by Dr. Sean Baker. Dr. Sean Baker, about three or four years ago, started the Carnivore Challenge, and the Carnivore Challenge was something that ran through the month of January. The Carnivore Challenge is as follow. You eat meat, you eat eggs, you can have bone broth, and then there's a little room for a couple other things. Dr. Baker isn't against seasoning. He's definitely not against salt. You definitely wanna make sure you have salt in your diet because it's important that you have electrolytes. You also might wanna incorporate something like bone broth, and if you listen to other people, that are experts in the space. You listen to somebody like Paul Saladino, these are people that you guys should follow. So follow them on Instagram, follow them on their other forms of social media. They both have YouTube channels, they both have podcasts where they are pumping out tons of information on this diet. I think sometimes people are like, well show me the science, I wanna see the science. Well if you wanna know the science, you're gonna know it from these guys. Dr. Baker also has something that he started called Meet RX. This is not a promotion for you guys to you know, have to spend money or for you guys have to do anything from a monetary standpoint to support some of my friends. Um, but I'm just giving you that information because I think that information can be extremely beneficial to you. There's something in some old Russian literature uh, referred to as the principle of awareness. And uh, the more that you're aware of what you're doing, the more reasons uh, why you can stick to it. So the more that I know the benefits of the carnivore diet, you can kind of start to say to yourself, well, the more I recognize the great things that it can do for me, probably the easier it is to stick to it. And I'll give you an example. An example would be, you try the carnivore diet for two weeks, and maybe it relieves you from some autoimmune disorders. Maybe it, it relieves you from some pain or some uh, inflammatory things that you had going on with your elbow or your knee or something like that. Well, you're like, hey, this diet works great but it's also driving you crazy because you're just eating meat. <laughs> and so you're like, well, I wanna be like a regular person. I wanna be more social. I wanna go out with my friends and I wanna have you know, a cheeseburger and fries and a shake. Well, you go out and do that and the next day, sure enough, and this isn't true with everybody, but it's true with many people, their elbow, their knee, whatever was inflamed, feels inflamed again. Whatever the autoimmune disorder was, it came right back. I mean, we've seen this diet reverse so many different things. Another example would be my mother-in-law, my, my very own mother-in-law, 72 years old. At age 71, it took us 10 days. It took us only 10 days to get her off of her diabetic medication. She's had diabetes for the last seven years. Diabetes is not something that you just magically get rid of. And so she's still not necessarily out of the woods. She still has to adhere to the diet in order to get the benefits of the diet. However, she knows, she, she, now, she now has a weapon against diabetes. Are you super happy and proud of yourself? I am re this You should is be, you've been working hard. You guys, this is life changing. If you have diabetes, this is the way to go. I am so pumped. And that's what I wanna to communicate to you, is that this could be a weapon, in my opinion. This is my opinion. This could be a weapon against almost all disease almost all the ailments that people have. There are things that are unexplained, and I will be the first to admit that. However, we are seeing this diet help with so many different things. So now you guys are armed with some of the things that can help you do. What are some of the do's and don'ts of the carnivore diet? Another great place to start is because I like to reference out places that you can look other than just following me. Because if you only follow me, then maybe you're still skeptical. Maybe you're like, mm, I don't know, what does this guy have to say? What does that guy have to say? What about, does it work for women? What about, does it work for younger people? Does it work for older people? Well, I'll tell you that my firsthand experience and the experience I've shared with other people, it works for young and old. It works for male and female. There, we had a family on our podcast recently, the Spath family. And when they were on our podcast, um, they shared with us how they both were able to lose about 70 pounds from the carnivore diet and it reversed them out of many uh, autoimmune disorders and it reversed them out of really, probably the main thing that it reversed them out of is 
being addicted to food. So I know a lot of you are thinking, man, how do I get started on something like this? Because it sounds like, okay, I wake up the next day and I just start to eat meat. <laughs> and then the next meal I have meat. And then the next meal I have meat, right? It sounds like that's all you're doing. Well, that is pretty much it. Well, how do you get yourself to do that? One way to get yourself to do that is to simply try to take it one meal at a time. Another way of doing that is not to allow yourself to get hungry. I promote intermittent fasting quite a bit. Intermittent fasting is another great strategy. Intermittent fasting is also what has helped my mother-in-law fight type 2 diabetes because type 2 diabetes is insulin resistance. One fantastic way to fight insulin resistance is with fasting. And so we utilize that technique. But not everyone has to utilize fasting. And if you're not used to a diet, I would strongly urge you against fasting. If you've never done a diet really low in carbohydrates, I would also strongly advocate that you don't mess around with fasting. Just eat. And I'm gonna make this really simple for you. We have eggs, we got butter, we have different kinds of meat. Those are gonna be the things that you wanna to stick to. Remember I mentioned salt, it's important to have salt. Those are gonna be the things that you wanna to stick to. And when are you gonna eat? And like, why are you gonna eat? Well, you're gonna eat anytime that you'd like, <laughs> and you're gonna eat uh, until you're satisfied each and every time. This is not really necessarily an onslaught of you eating as much as you want all the time. However, you should be eating as much as you need. How do we know how much food we need? Well, here's the great thing about being on a carnivorous diet. It will auto-regulate itself over a period of time. So let's just say I tried the carnivore diet for two weeks. Well, you might be a bigger person. You might really love food. You might really love to eat. Every time you eat a steak, you eat like a 32 ounce steak and you eat all the sides with it and everything. Well, after you do this diet for a little while and after you have a 32 ounce steak, a 32 ounce steak, a 32 ounce steak, you have some eggs, you got some butter, you have another steak. After a while, you get what's called palate fatigue. You're like, holy crap, I've had enough. If you wanna find out science and you wanna hear a lot of studies and a lot of things like that, there's other resources that you can utilize for this. But this is just my own theory. I think that we have cups every single day that we must fill up in our lives. And that goes from philosophical things to physiological things. That, there's a wide array of things that we need to fill up every single day in order for us to feel full, in order for us to feel good every single day. From an appetite perspective, if we fill up our cup for hydration every day. That means we get in enough water every day and we get in enough sodium every day. If we also fill up our cup for protein every day and we fill up our cup for fat every day, how much do we need to fill up our cup for carbohydrates? Does anybody know the answer? The amount of dietary carbohydrates a human being needs is zero. That's really important for you to know and understand. The amount of dietary carbohydrates a human being needs is zero. But yet our government has shoved it down our throat since we were kids that we need 60% of our diet coming from carbohydrate, which is absolutely ludicrous and doesn't really make any sense considering the fact that we need zero grams of carbohydrates from our diet. Your body is still going to magically turn a lot of things into sugar because the body does have a need for glucose. But luckily for us, our body is smart enough to take our proteins and to sometimes turn them into sugar through a process called gluconeogenesis, which we don't have to really worry about. The body will just do it on a need basis, not on an amount of protein basis. So I think that is also something that people worry about too much. Oh man, I'm not supposed to eat too much protein. No, no, no. I don't believe that it's even possible to eat too much protein. Protein is the most satiating thing that you can eat. Out of the three things that we have, we have protein, we have carbohydrates, and we have fat. And then also, I guess you can make a case for ketones as well, being like the fourth macronutrient. But when it comes to protein, you, you need a certain amount of protein every single day. Every living organism on the planet needs protein. And actually there's a lot of theories that when we're hungry, that we're always in search of protein. But what happens in today's, in today's day and age, when we're sifting through our pantry and we find pretzels and we find Doritos and we find granola bars and things like that, and we eat cereal, we ate a bunch of stuff. All those things taste delicious. All those things override the body's ability to recognize that we're full. All of, all of those things override our ability to recognize that our cups are full for the nutrients that we need every single day. You don't end up with palate fatigue from those things because there's so many different flavors and there's so many different ingredients going on with everything that you eat. And there's so much pop and so much to each thing that you eat that your brain is about ready to explode. All of the, the mouth feel, uh, the way that the food smells, the way that the packaging is, it's too much. Our bodies do not know how to handle these things. Our bodies were not designed, we were not made 
to have these things. However, we are made to eat meat. We have been made to eat meat for a very, very long time. Back to the protein. It has been said by people smarter than myself, and you can look this up, and you can, you're gonna hear this more in 2020, and you're gonna hear this more in 2021 and 2022. This is gonna be an ongoing thing that people are gonna talk about a lot. It's called protein leveraging. In my opinion, protein shouldn't even count as a calorie, and if it does count as a calorie, it should only count as one calorie as opposed to counting as four per gram. There's a lot of different reasons on why I'm saying this. You can look up the science and look up the information yourself, but there's so much overwhelming evidence that that is the case. We have just gotten lazy and we've just said, hey, it's calories in, it's calories out. But when you go on a diet like this and you start to eat meat and you start to fill up those cups I was talking about earlier, I haven't even gotten to this part yet. We're filling up our macronutrient cup every single day protein and fat. How much protein should you have on a carnivore diet? At least one gram per pound of body weight. Ish. It can be ish. Some people might say lean mass. It's kind of up to you on what you want to do with that. But I would say, even if you're 500 pounds, I would say have 500 grams of protein. Why am I saying that? Why would that make sense? Well, because you're a big person and you probably enjoy eating quite a bit of food. I would keep that protein count high over a period of time if you're not losing weight you can try to lower it. But most people, when they go on a diet, they make the biggest mistake that you can ever make with going on any diet is they start out by not eating enough food. So make sure you're eating enough food. Make sure that protein is up high. I don't like to count anything. I don't count anything. I don't weigh anything. But if you were to count anything and you wanted some sort of accurate measure of just having some idea of what the heck it is that you're doing, I would suggest that you pay attention to how much protein you're getting. So you wanna to try to keep that protein high. But another key factor. I mean, we need, also need to have fat. How much fat you have, some people say you might want to try to have a one-to-one -one ratio. If you're a bigger person, as in like 400 pounds, 500 pounds, you probably wouldn't want to have four or 500 grams of fat as well as four or 500 grams of protein. It might just be too much food overall. But it has been said by many that like a one-to-one -one ratio works really, really well. I don't worry about that kind of stuff. I don't weigh those things out. I don't pay much attention to it again because it will auto-regulate. And here's how that works. Through protein leveraging, your hunger will drive down. There's also something else that's gonna happen while you're on a carnivore diet that people don't talk about that much. Remember earlier, I talked a little bit about intermittent fasting, but what happens on a carnivorous diet is you end up with something that I have coined, I believe I coined it, I'll just take credit for it, inadvertent fasting. You don't even really mean to fast, but you ate at like 8 a.m. and you had steak and eggs and you're not hungry again until one o'clock. You have steak and eggs again for lunch and then you're not hungry again until 6 p.m. Sometimes you're like, you know what? I could just make it the whole rest of the day. I feel totally fine. The way that's working is through two different things. Number one, we have protein leveraging. And number two, we're ending up filling up our cup for our micronutrients. You're filling up everything that the body needs. Meat, I know this is hard for people to understand. Meat has everything that the body needs and it has nothing that you don't need. Meat has everything that the body needs and nothing that you don't. People may try to blow some holes in that and that's okay. They can do whatever they want with it. I believe it to be true. Some people will even say it's like, okay, so I'm on a carnivore diet. I'm understanding a lot of this is really making sense, but why in the world would I not eat vegetables? Because vegetables are not part of this diet. Fruit is not part of this diet. Could you have some fruit? Could you have some vegetables and still be healthy? I think the answer is absolutely yes. I, I think it's very clear that human beings are omnivores. But how much access have we had over the years to fruits and vegetables? Did we really have a plethora of fruits and vegetables year round? Probably not. They're probably frozen. They're probably underneath a bunch of snow or they're probably dead. They probably weren't available for us to eat. A lot of the percentage of plants that are on this planet, you can't even eat them without getting very sick. But the reason on why we cut out fruits and the reason why we cut out vegetables is not necessarily because they're bad. However, in today's modern day of how much abuse and how much negative impact and negative influence and how much insulting of the metabolism that we have done, we have to take drastic and extreme measures. There's something in a lot of plants that are referred to as anti-nutrients. And so anti-nutrients can wreak havoc on people. Again, you can look some of this up. You don't have to believe me. You can start to research this. Google it before you go throwing some stones at me. Pay attention to what's going on up there. And I, I'm not making this stuff up. A lot of people will think that meat is cancerous in large amounts without vegetables. That has been shown many, many times over to be as true <laughs> as some studies show, but also it's been proven to be completely wrong as well. So we don't have enough information 
to say one way or another on some of those things. But most of the people that I know and most of the leading researchers, and I have friends that are studying cancer, they are the leading researchers in the world on this stuff and they don't find any benefit. I know, you sound, think it sounds crazy. They don't find any benefit at all to eating vegetables. Now, if your beliefs are towards vegetables and you love vegetables, what I would suggest is take everything out of the diet. Eat your meat, eat your eggs, throw in some butter here and there, eat your bone broth, and cut everything else out. And try that for a few weeks. Now, what's gonna happen is you might have some diarrhea. Your stomach might hurt. You may have a few days where you don't go to the bathroom at all. You may have a day where your butt is like, feels like it's been struck by lightning <laughs> and you're just blowing it out left and right. That will take some time to get used to. The body no longer has fiber in it. There's some water displacement going on between your stool and there's a lot of different things going on uh, in your gut because the food is new. What I always say is with new food, we got some new poops going on, right? There's gonna be an adjustment period. Many of you that have pets, you know that when you change the pet's food, it's a real roll of the dice on what's gonna happen when the, when the pet has to go to the bathroom. We are no different. And so when you start to take out a lot of things out of your diet and you start to add in things that are new, you might have some issues. If you would like to figure out a way to not have those issues, what I would suggest is maybe taking some baby steps into the carnivore diet. And here's what you could do, is maybe on week one, you can do meat and fruit and vegetables. Maybe week two, you can cut back on the fruit and, fruit and vegetables a little bit. And by the third week, you can be off and running and just trying carnivore. Why would you only try carnivore? Well, there's a possibility that some of the plant lectins or some of the things in plants, some of the anti-nutrients in plants, there is a possibility, although it could be small, but there is a possibility that those things are triggering some of the autoimmune disorders that you have. It is my belief that every single human being on this planet has disorders, whether it's an eating disorder, an autoimmune disorder, or we're just a little screwed up. I'm a firm believer in that. And having gone through a lot of different things myself, from emotional standpoints to physical standpoints, being somebody that has squatted 1,080, being somebody that has competed in bodybuilding, uh, being somebody that has lost many loved ones over the years, lost a lot of friends to drugs and alcohol. I lost a lot of people to people just being out of control, had family members just being very sick from lack of, from really just lack of paying attention to what they're eating and not exercising at all. I know that this has helped me a ton. I'm able to pump out information every single day here and I feel really good. There's a lot of other reasons that uh, might support that as well other than just the diet. I used to be 330 pounds. My sleep is good. I feel like I have a good head on my shoulders. I feel strong every single day. I feel like if I can help you feel even just a, a tiny bit of what I feel, I think that I can make a huge difference in this world. Here, I was put on this earth to make the world a better place to lift, and I'd love for a lot of you guys to join in and try this diet out. Even if you don't believe everything that I say, that's totally fine. You're different than me. I'm different than you. We're not gonna always agree on every single thing. Lastly, I wanna finish off with sharing a book with you guys, but Maria and Craig Emmerich, who I've had on Mark Bell's Power Project, they are fantastic, they are awesome people, and you should check out their book. They wrote a book, The Carnivore Cookbook, and they also explain, there's some brief information on how you wanna go about doing your carnivore diet, but there's a lot of great information in that book. There's a lot of recipes in that book. A lot of people don't understand that. When I say to eat meat, I'm talking about everything from elk to lamb, to sausage, to bacon, to hot dogs, to going, rolling through In-N-Out Burger. I mean, you can have any kind of meat that you can think of. You do want to watch out for, like most bacon has like sugar in it and stuff like that. You do want to watch out for ingredients. You do want to pay attention. There's, there's so many great options when it comes to meat. You can go grass-fed, you can go organic, you can go grass-fed, grass-finished, you can get as hippy-dippy as you want to get with this, but I, I think it's unnecessary. What supplements do you need? for the carnivore diet. You don't need any. You're eating the best supplement in the world and that's meat. I also highly recommend, they sponsor me, they sponsor my podcast and so of course I'm gonna recommend them but Piedmontese Beef, you wanna check out that website. You can use my code, Mark Bell. And this is not, I'm not trying to promote stuff just to sell a bunch of shit to you so that's more money in my pocket, although that's wonderful. All I'm trying to do is share information that will provide a ton of value for you. I think that's all the time we got. I think that solves uh, Carnivore for Dummies. Hopefully you guys are more informed. In the comments below, please let me know how I can help you further. And that way maybe we can shoot a part two of this. But I think, 
I think I covered, you know, I, I mentioned Sean Baker, I mentioned Paul Saladino. Make sure, you're, make sure you're following a lot of these people. They have a lot of great information. Follow my brother at Big Strong Fast. Follow me at Mark Smelly Bell on Instagram. I also have another YouTube channel, which is at Mark Smelly Bell. Lastly, I'm gonna finish with this. We are here at Slingshot World Headquarters, AKA Super Training Gym, 855 Riverside Parkway. And guess what? The gym is free. Any Saturday and Sunday you wanna come in here, you can come in here between 10 and one o'clock and the gym is free. There's no strings attached. All that we ask is that you come in here and put up some points on the scoreboard. All we ask is that you work hard and we won't even be mad if you're somebody that likes to eat vegetables. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never a strength. Catch you all later.